that is not a pile of sticks and leaves. It is a living, breathing turtle. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the famous Mata Mata, Kellis Fimbriata. It's a freshwater turtle species found primarily in the Amazon and Orinoco Basin, and they get pretty large. Of course, there's variation, just like with any species, some get larger than others, but records say that they get to be bigger, longer than 24 inches. This is Jada, Jada the Mata. We're not sure if it's a male or female yet because he or she is pretty young at only about six and a half inches shell length, but looking like a girl. Jada, one of the meanings of Jada means tangled or matted, and that's kind of what you're looking at here. It's just a, a beautiful mess, if you will. Jada is an incredibly weird turtle species, but she is wonderfully weird, and there's a lot of interesting things that go along with the Mata Mata. Number one being their suction feeding. They actually vacuum the food in using low pressure and they don't chew, they don't tear it apart, nothing. They wait at the bottom of a marsh or a river or a stream and when an unsuspecting fish comes by, they simply kind of just smile at it and then suck it right in. It's truly incredible and they are designed to be the perfect predator. All they have to do is sit around and wait because they look like a pile of sticks or leaves or logs, whatever you want to call it, they blend right in. They have these amazing skin flaps all along the neck and at underneath the chin and they have a snorkel for a nose and their coloration with the pink and the brown and the yellow and the black just makes them completely disguise themselves from anything that's coming by. They're fish eaters, that's basically all they will eat and Jada is feeding on live fish here. Here. But what's exciting about this is this is a brand new project for us and we just got donated to us by our friends Joe and Shane Embry a wonderful center unit that we have completely designed to specifically meet the needs of Jada the Mata and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put her in it right now. Maybe we'll get to see some feeding action and we're going to talk a little bit about their habits and well just the habitat of the Mata Mata and why this is a suitable home for Jada. Here it is. I gave you guys a little teaser of it in the last video and you can see it looks pretty different now. It's set up and it's ready to go and it has been specifically designed to meet the needs of a Mata Mata. So I think Jada is going to do really well in this. Now, one of the things that Mata Matas like to do is they like to hang out in shallow water and perch up where they can just kind of get their snorkel to stick right out of the water. They feel comfortable there. There's a lot of fish swimming through, but contrary to popular belief, in more recent studies, people are finding that they do live in deeper water. Makes perfect sense. Both types of snapping turtles are found in deeper water when everybody thought that they were just in shallow water. So we kind of met a middle ground here. This isn't very deep water, uh, but it's also not terribly shallow, but there are plenty of areas for Jada to perch onto and easily get out of the water. On top of that, the water is very warm. It is heated to 80 degrees. 75 to 80 degrees is what's suitable for the Mata Mata. They come from very warm waters and that will enable Jada to be more active. She reaches that optimal temperature to where she can move around and get to the surface with ease. When reptiles are cooler, they can't move as swiftly and they also lose that strength, so there could be a risk of drowning there per se. But we're also not dealing with a hatchling here. When Matas are born, they're tiny, just like all turtle hatchlings are. But this animal has got some decent size to it already, so it's going to be able to move around in here wonderfully. We already have fish in it. There are rosies in here and there are also fathead minnows. So uh, she's already got plenty of live fish and we know she absolutely loves them. So we're gonna go ahead and put her in. This is the first time she's getting to check out her permanent enclosure. So as I said, this enclosure was donated to us by Joe and Shane, and what's really cool about it is that it's essentially a zoo exhibit. And Casey and I kind of copied off one of the zoos that we like to go to over here in New Jersey, which is the Cape May County Zoo. And when you go into their reptile house, right there in the middle is a center uh, aquatic environment like this, and they have a Mata Mata in it, among some other things, like uh, I think they have some snake neck turtles in there. And um, 
I always wanted something like that, and so did Casey. So we went for it. When when they asked us if we wanted this, we were like, uh, yeah. And what's even funnier is that they already had the idea that it would be awesome to do a Mata Mata in this tank. So it was meant to be. So it's a four foot by four foot cube. It's about 30 inches tall, filled up maybe three quarters of the way. And I used a lot of different natural pieces of driftwood and snags that were actually brought to us by the one and only Ken. So we got some really gnarly looking pieces to make this look like a little piece of the Amazon, if you will. One other thing you're gonna notice, it's always gonna be basically tea colored. And that's because Mata Matas occur in black water areas throughout their natural range. So what I did was I added black water. And what that does is it not only adds the coloration to the water that helps the Mata Mata feel at home and makes you feel like you're staring at a piece of their natural environment, but it also helps get the pH level to where you want it to be. Mata Matas require a 5.5 to 6 pH in the water. Some people say it's important, other people don't. You guys know that Casey and I like to do everything as naturalistically as possible and we cannot house a Mata Mata outdoors here year round. It has to stay very warm. I'm sure you can tell how much I'm sweating in our nature room is because it's 88 degrees in here. So there's a nice sandy bottom, nice soft substrate for them. We have both live and fake plants growing in here. Plenty of areas for the Mata Mata to hide in and again climb up onto so that she can easily extend her neck up to the surface and get air. Even though it looks like there are areas for basking, she will not be basking because Mata Matas are fully aquatic and really the females only leave the water to lay their eggs. So there you have it. That's our brand new enclosure here in the nature room for Jada the Mata. We love it. Think she's gonna really enjoy it. The live fish have been in here for weeks now and they're doing great, which is a great sign because if the turtle's food is doing good, then the turtle should do good. Mata Matas are absolutely incredibly weird and amazing turtles. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that that's a turtle. What do you think? Weird, right? But cool weird. So as time goes on, the plants are gonna grow more and Jada's is gonna get super used to her habitat and make her own little niches and stuff and it'll be really cool to come in here and check out where she is and what she's doing. And of course, watching her eat. In other exciting news, in just a couple of days, Casey and I are going to be flying out to the great state of Minnesota to go see Snake Discovery. Emily and Ed were kind enough to reach out to us and ask us to be part of their 2022 enclosure build-off. We're super excited and honored to be there. There's gonna be some incredible creators there with us. If you don't know what I'm talking about, head on over to Snake Discovery's YouTube page and check out the enclosure build-off from last year so you can get an idea of what's coming up in just a couple of days. And of course, to check out their other amazing videos.